Welcome to the car, guys, and welcome to possibly one of the greatest days of our lives. I can't believe this is just incredible. This is actually a Carrera GT. Is this a Carrera GT? It is. Is it a real one? It is a Porsche Carrera GT, one of only 1,270, one of the greatest cars ever created. You've been gagging for it on this channel. And finally, thanks to the Octane Collection, we are going to deliver it for you today in all its glory. I think I've just let it go, man, we. <laughs> this is it, folks. It's finally happening. This week, we are driving the Porsche Carrera GT, a car that is rapidly achieving legendary status and collectability. Originally shown in concept form at the 2000 Paris Motor Show and famously driven around the Place Charles de Gaulle by Walter Roll in the early morning of the 28th of September, the Carrera GT, aka the Type 980, was a revelation. A carbon fibre Le Mans powered 604 brake horsepower V10 mid-engined hypercar and the orders came flooding in despite an original purchase price of 452,690 euros. After this initial response from its best customers the Carrera GT was unsurprisingly greenlit for production and was made from 2003 to 2007. With an original production plan of 1500 cars though only 1,270 were actually made. And it's no surprise to see why the car was so highly anticipated. The CGT features a central carbon fibre tub, as seen here, which is incredibly strong and means no deformation of the passenger compartment in the event of an accident. Here's someone actually making up the layers of carbon fibre in the factory at the time. And here's the carbon fibre underside with its two clear Venturi tunnels to force air through and aid downforce to help achieve the car's 206 mile an hour top speed. A carbon rear bulkhead and engine mounts made from a carbon reinforced plastic is attached to the tub so that it can be clothed in its sleek bodywork and to also house the magnificent V10 naturally aspirated engine. But more about that later. Thanks to extensive use of carbon in the structure and bodywork, the Carrera GT weighs 1380 kilograms. And you could get it originally in Guards Red, Faience Yellow, Basalt Black, GT Silver and Seal Grey. But the big questions for this week's episode are, does the Carrera GT still feel special? What's it like to drive now? And is it really worth the current market value of nearly one million pounds? Okay, so here we have the Carrera GT, one of the most fantastic looking vehicles ever produced by literally anybody. This shape is so elegant, it's so unfussy, it's just a wonderfully beautiful curvy car. So this car, 54 plate, 2004, doesn't look like it's aged a bit, it still cuts it in the world of hypercars. This car is 17 years old, can you believe that? 17 years old. Literally hasn't aged one iota in all of those years. So let's have a quick walk around and I'm gonna show you some of the details that I find particularly lovely. So let's start off with the wheels. Center lockers on this, again, completely unfussy design. There's no diamond cut alloys here, but there is the ubiquitous Porsche yellow calipers designating our ceramic discs and a lovely little blue electric blue center locker here. You can tell this car's been through a wind tunnel. Look at this vent here, aerodynamic device purely there to let pressure out from the front wheel arch. You can just see the front tire poking out and saying hello. Of course we have one of these features on the F40 as well. And now let's focus on that engine seen here sitting amidships of the car ahead of the rear axle and with fuel tanks sat either side lifting that beautiful honeycomb lid and here it is a v10 mechanical symphony originally developed for the footwork formula one team and then adapted for le mans and eventually road use the capacity of the originally developed 5.5 litre naturally aspirated V10 engine, which was designed for the track, was increased to 5.7 litres for the standard production model, 5733cc to be precise. 0 to 60 miles an hour comes in 3.9 seconds, 0 to 100 in 6.8 seconds, and 0 to 124 in 9.9 .9 seconds. The top speed is an autobahn frazzling 206 miles an hour. The engine develops 604 brake horsepower, which is 612 PS, and peak torque is 435 foot-pounds, or 590 newton meters. 
The CGT comes with a six-speed manual gearbox and beechwood gear stick, a homage to the 917, that's connected to the world's first ceramic two-plate dry Porsche ceramic composite clutch, or PCCC, which is strong and small at 169 millimeters to allow it to be mounted low in the car as seen here. High performance braking came in the form of 380 millimeters carbon reinforced silicon carbide ceramics, which allow the car to come to a stop from 70 miles an hour in a third of the distance of a conventional car. You can see the curve of the tub of the car and it actually feels like a completely different thing. Like this has been built on top of it. Under here, we have the door handles which we'll get to in a minute, and then the vents for the radiators for the engine. Lifting up the carbon boot or hood, and you can see absolutely no space whatsoever for luggage. Once you have that target top placed in here, passengers literally have no room for any accoutrement, so you are stuck with soft bags in the cabin. With the roof on, you have just 76 litres of space. Okay, let's talk about the back. Oh, wow, where to start? These exhausts, just look at them. Just look at, they are space age. These are the type of things that were on the back of a spaceship in the 70s and 80s. You'd see them on cartoons, you see, they're just incredible. Those exhaust tips are so iconic of this car. Everywhere you look on this car, it just, it's a feast for the eyes. There is so much detail to be had here, like this beautiful mesh covering the engine. Obviously it's there to let the hot air out, but it's there for us to feast our eyes on what could be underneath. There's little cutaways here that feed the engine with even more cold air. Obviously the iconic spoiler that raises as you go faster. We obviously will not see that come up today because we're very, very sensible people. The two rollover hoops separated by the high level brake light with a beautiful Porsche detail across the back. This car really is a feaster for the eyes. You'll notice that there isn't a lot of carbon on show on this car, which you think was a bit strange, but there's a couple of little cues. The posts for the rear spoiler are in carbon fiber. I think we probably should just have a little sit inside what do you think? Reach underneath, opens the door. See, with the Carrera GT, there was no flashy scissor doors, no hydraulical, hexical nonsense. You just open the door and get in. What you do notice, first of all, is the massive sides of this tub. Lovely Carrera GT written on the carbon fiber seals. Okay, let's slide ourselves in. Um, I'm guessing bum first is gonna be the best way of doing this. <sighs> Wow, what an amazing place to sit. The seats initially, very, very comfortable, very well supported and padded. I love looking down this tunnel. Um, floor pivoted pedals, which might sound a bit odd. Um, hark back to the Beetle. Awkward, shh, shh, don't say anything. Sitting here, you just feel like you're in a proper business point of the car. Uh, it's all completely driver focused. And don't forget, the lovely wooden gear knob. I mean, that is just incredible. Right up here by the steering wheel for quick changes. I think that's probably enough now, isn't it? Do you think we should go for a drive? I mean, I've got the key, so I mean, what could possibly go wrong? Let's get Damien and head out. Here we are then. I literally couldn't be more excited. This is the first time I've ever driven a Carrera GT. It's a dream car, a hyper car, a possible garage car. It's everything all rolled into one. With a wooden gear stick. How, I mean, how, oh, how exciting is this? This is just amazing. I mean, we've been talking about this for like oh, four God, years easily since we started the channel. And now, finally, thanks to the Octane Collection, we are actually driving one on this channel for your viewing pleasure. Let's hope that you don't stall it. I'm bit worried about the whole clutch scenario. Yeah. yeah, so we should explain. The clutch is the thing that everyone tells you about. It's very easy to stall. If you give it some uh, gas, when you've got the clutch depressed, you can burn out the very, very expensive carbon clutch. Only 35 grand, so. Which, which we don't want to do. So everyone says you have to get to the bite point of the clutch, get the car moving on its own, on its own power, and then apply the throttle. The, the throttle after okay. that. Okay. Um, and tr when you come to a roundabout, try not to bring it to a stop. Try and time it so you can just get through without actually having to stop. Oh, good lord! So this, this is, is going to be very. Disaster. I'm going to forget this straight away. Burn out the clutch, and that's going to be it. Bang. Yeah. 
<laughs> Sat in here, we have obviously a classic Porsche steering wheel from, Very I nice. guess, the 996 generation. 996 generation kind of dials. We've got the uh, key over on the left-hand side for those Le Mans starts where you would run to the car, jump in, grab with your right hand the gear stick and with your left hand the ignition and that meant you could just race off immediately. So classic Le Mans format just like it is in things like the 993 911. It's quite bare in here but very tasteful. Oh it's very nice though isn't it in yeah. here? Really tasteful. It's just incredibly Teutonic and restrained. Yeah. Central tunnel, we've got the climate controls down the bottom, yep. the windows, the beechwood gear oh. stick in homage of the 917 Porsche, oh. and then, uh, yeah, some other buttons here and the radio, a very sort of uh, tiny, teeny radio. You're not really going to put that on though, are you? No. Let's be honest. No, we're not going to put that on because, of course, this has a V10 mm. Formula One engine in the back. Yes, it does. Let, let's yes, start does. this thing now. Start it. Let's, start let's go. It. Oh. Starts very nicely though. Very smooth. I've got a one of those sort of like drop handle um, handbrakes. Hand so you put that down there to the floor. Here we go. First ever into first. Yep. We're in Let clutch the clutch up. up. Clutch up gently. Car starts to move. And we're away. Wow. I oh, didn't oh, stall. Round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Round of applause for I Damien. did not stall it. Yes. You didn't burn the clutch out. You didn't stall it. I am very, very impressed. That was quite something. That's a moment, that I've is. never loved you more. <laughs> it's a moment. <laughs> now, the only thing I would say is that this wing mirror, because we're sat so low, that wing mirror is a massive blind spot. Uh, yeah, they are quite large, aren't they? It feels very delicate. It really is. From, I mean, it, from it, the first instant, I've got super fingertippy steering. The whole car feels so light, it? Doesn't feels it? really light. It's so I mean, light. ridiculously light. You can feel that we're in a, a sort of tub, and the whole car feels like it weighs about the same as a packet of crisps. Okay. All right, you're clear. Am I? Yep. Go, you have to be quicker than that though. Go. Perfect. You have to be quicker than that. <laughs> Surely people must understand, if you see a Carrera GT on the road, you know that it's going to pull out of a junction very, very slowly. It's very, very smooth, isn't it, the engine? It's so smooth. It's like golden syrup. I would tell you all about the stats, but to be honest, I'm using no all of my <laughs> concentration <laughs> just to make sure that I enjoy every single second of this car because this is a proper car guys moment. This is this is boyhood stuff. These oh, cars now they are they were trading around about six hundred thousand pounds. They're now at the sort of eight fifty nine hundred thousand pound mark. So they have started to appreciate. Remember, there are well, only... we called it, didn't we? We called it about a year and a half ago. We, we went did. Carrera GTs going through the roof. Yeah. That's when they were at 300. <laughs> Remember, there are only 1,270 of these cars made. They were going to do 1,500. They're about as numerous as Ferrari F40s. Yeah. But a completely different feel, different experience. And for people who are into Porsche, which obviously... Everybody I, I is. <laughs> this is the one to have. This is like one of the ultimate cars. So ahead of me, I've got dials which are very reminiscent of the 996 era. There's nothing special about them whatsoever. From sitting where I am, this could be a 996 convertible. It's oh, very... Jesus. Why did you go, what? 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 The only thing special in this car is this gear knob and the noise coming from behind us. But I know what you're waiting for, and now it's time to give you some grade A Porsche Carrera GT beans. <laughs> Loving it. Oh, and a clear road for. Wow, this, this is a Let's moment. Let's have it. Come on in. Oh my god. Oh my god, my god. Now, I don't think I was at full throttle then because I'm a bit scared. As you should be. 
a healthy oh. respect. The rear spoiler has popped itself up. Yeah, exactly. This is a thing. Oh, oh my god. That was practically a religious experience. Oh, I don't think I'm going to be the same again. That is amazing. Wow. That is absolutely incredible. The noise it makes is just... Yeah. It's special, isn't it? You know it's going to make that noise, but when you're sitting here in it, when it's doing it, suspension very compliant as well, really rides those bumps, doesn't it? Yep. I mean, it's a it feels quite wide, actually, surprisingly so. So, I didn't expect it to feel, I thought it would feel a lot smaller, but yeah. I guess it does, it, it is quite a largish looking car, but... Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Oh. oh, my God. This is it. We are in... A Carrera GT. A Carrera GT. See, I told you you should have bought one, didn't I, when it was oh, 300 grand. Oh, God, why didn't we? You didn't Honestly. listen to me, did you? Honestly, hey? why didn't we buy it? Oh. What a, what a fool. How light the flywheel is and how quick it revs. Listen to that. It's literally non-existent, that flywheel, isn't it? That's like motorbike oh levels. We've achieved a dream. When we started the car, guys, we thought, Maybe we could drive all sorts of cool cars, like, yeah. you know, a Carrera GT. Yeah, and we were like, don't be dull, that's never happening. No one's going to lend us one of these. No one's going to let us drive one of those. And, and now, here we are. It's so balanced. I mean, honestly, it's, it's so much better at these roads than I am. <laughs> it, yes. It's it, like it knows what to do. I mean, it's just lovely. Are we exploring the outer limits of performance of this car? No, we are not. No, we are not. It's not mine, and it's beautiful and pristine. This one's done about 12,000 miles. Oh, which, good lord. Well, it's kind of perfect, isn't it? Because it's not so super collectible that you would never drive it, and it's not too much that maybe you think it had been ragged. It's literally the perfect mileage. I mean, it doesn't feel intimidating, really, apart from Apart from the tales of skittishness and yes. the fact that you could snap snap it away quite quickly, those are the things that, that are in the back of your mind. Snap oversteer you're talking about. I yeah. am, that is exactly right. Yeah. And, but, but when you're driving it, it doesn't feel like it would do that. It feels relaxed and easy to drive. But we are talking about a mid-engined V10 Porsche. So is it special enough? Well, I mean, I have to say the noise is... Yeah, the noise for sure. I but don't think it's I don't think it's that much of, a, of an event in the cabin, but I mean, the the steering response, the way it copes with these bends, the way it sweeps through the bends is is pretty special. I have to say, this just needs a tunnel to drive through, <laughs> wouldn't it? I mean, if you owned if you owned one of these and had a big enough property, you'd build a tunnel. You would build a tunnel, you wouldn't would, you? Yeah, yeah definitely. ridiculously fast. That could be because I'm too scared to press the pedal all the way. <laughs> so it, it, might, it might be that. I mean, it's quick, isn't it? It's yeah. quick. I mean, it's no Koenigsegg. Nothing, it's... nothing is Koenigsegg <laughs> fast, yeah. is it? This is a surgeon's knife. Well, very much so. Isn't it? This yeah. scalpel precision compared to something like a Koenigsegg, which is more like Thor's hammer. I'm shitting my pants. Here we go, this is it, Jason's go. Let's see how he uh, fares with the Carrera GT pull-off. Very well. Hey, two for two. 
There we go. <laughs> oh yeah, once it's running. Once it's running, you're fine. Oh God, this is wonderful. It's dreamy stuff, isn't A it? Frigging, this is freaking amazing, man. I'll tell you what, you do look good in this car. Oh, this, mate, this is a bit of me, this car, I reckon. And you feel very, very far forward. Yes. You do feel like there's quite a lot of car behind you. Yeah, which there definitely is. Which there definitely is. So you're clear to the left. Uh, if you go now, you're clear to the left. Go, 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 go. Yes, f yes. I get what you mean about you feel like you're in a 996, which maybe lets it down a little bit. But I have to say this is one of the greater driving experiences. It feels F40 light do you know what i mean oh yeah can i can i give it a little bit of beanage you can yes wow when that thing comes on cab holy cow that yeah. really goes why did you not buy one of these I, I really don't think I thought it was that special. And I, obviously I hadn't driven one, so it's taken us this long to drive it. I mean, we've been doing the car guys for four years. And we've not managed to drive one of these yet. It's a certain point in Porsche's history. It's a never to be repeated opportunity. They'll yeah. never ever do this again. This is the last time you'll ever see it. From now on, it's all gonna be hybrid-y, electric -y stuff. It does have a savage side to it, which I think you've always is in the back of your mind. So yeah. in some ways you can't fully enjoy this car. I would have almost wished that Porsche had, had maybe not done such a, a trick clutch so that you could enjoy the car a lot more. Such ludicrous pantomime just to get it off the line and, and off a T-junction. Such a shame that you have to really do that. I know you'll get used to it if you own this car, maybe but it is a bit of a shame. The worry, constant worry about running costs and about the costs of, of clutch. Yeah, I think it's possibly part of the reason why values haven't increased more quickly. My, uh, my top five now includes a Carrera GT. So F40 at number one. Obviously. And what are we talking, number uh, two, number is, three? What this we is thinking? number two now. Is it? Time for some beans. That was almost a snap, snap then. You snap, 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 snap. Come on. <laughs> well, special, 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 special car. It's very special. You were right. <laughs> Tell your sister, you were right. <laughs> okay, so we've driven it. You're back in the driver's seat. What is your summary of the Carrera GT? I love the balance, I love the engine, I love the sound, and I love the way it eats up corners, it just loves to corner, but I'm not a massive fan of the interior, I think it's a little bit plain, really, and I don't know if it's overall special enough to be paying 800,000 to a million quid, because we have that the big issue, and Jason, what is the big issue? big issue is as long as you're moving it's great yeah as soon as you have to try and maneuver it or stop at a junction a roundabout you know traffic lights zebra crossings god forbid it's a pain in the ass it's strange that porsche of all people the company that designs cars that you can just jump in and drive and have total usability then decides to put a clutch system in this which makes you a bit of a laughing stock at every single junction. Yeah. I mean, you do get used to it, don't get me wrong, but you're thinking about it, like now, the whole time. You're yeah. thinking about it the whole, you're thinking. No, see, you can't, it's not. Go, 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 go. There you are, ah, there we go. You see, you have to really judge junctions and it does take away some of the shine of this car. And I know, Carrera GT owners, you're going to be shouting at the screen going, you just get used to it, you thickos. And yeah, you do get used to it. But what we're saying is we're, we're dealing with degrees of discomfort here. Yeah. It is such an awesome, incredible car. It is. There's a degree of discomfort and pain that is frankly unnecessary. And at £35,000 for a clutch, 
utterly ridiculous. You should not have to pay the cost of a GR Yaris just because you got a junction wrong. Should you? <laughs> hey? <laughs> just because you happened to take it out when the school run was happening and then a yellow lollipop lady came out with her little thing in the middle of the road and went stop, you jumped all over the brakes and then the kids were standing there pointing and laughing at you because you'd stalled it four times. Just saying. The highs far outweigh the lows. Yeah. But you want us to give you the whole picture, don't you? You want us to tell us the good and the bad, not just the amazing. Yeah. That's what the car guys are all about. Absolutely. With that, back to the studio. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as we did. This is one special vehicle. Oh my God, this was one of the greatest bits of my life to date. This was incredible. Don't forget to subscribe, ding the notification bell for when we have another film uploaded. Find us on Instagram, Facebook, the website, and don't forget that merch. There'll be another episode of The Car Guys next week.